look at some comments here. The hell? Make this shit right. A few years ago, I made a video called Gran Turismo 3 A Spec Facts, Secrets, and Easter Eggs. You might have heard of it. It's only Franciosi and Friends Productions' most viewed video at 21,000 plus views. How it got that much views, I have no idea. It was literally something amateur I just wanted to make. I didn't anticipate it blowing up, let alone even becoming my most viewed video. Well, it was met with generally positive reviews. And then there were some negative reviews. It was either criticism or correcting from people who are actually decent or in maybe two cases being an outright asshole. So, without further ado, I think I finally decided to come out and do it after two more videos, making that a trilogy. Yes, there were two more. I'll correct any mistakes I made in those, and I will go through and make corrections to them. So, without further ado, this is Gran Turismo 3 A Spec Facts, Secrets, and Easter Eggs The Corrections. You can consider this a part four, but it's not really a part four. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so for the first part, we're covering the pronunciations. I've been told time and time again, some respectfully, some rather snarky, and in one case, just being an outright dickhead, it's pronounced Gran Turismo, like the Italian pronunciation. Well, while that's true and all, in the United States, there's a colloquial pronunciation of it being Gran Turismo. Colloquialisms are basically different ways people pronounce things in other parts of the world. For example, I hear on the west coast of the United States they call Maryland, Maryland. And in the UK, of course, they say tomato instead of tomato. And in other parts of the world, they call the letter Z, Z. So essentially, I call it by the American colloquialism, Gran Turismo. So if anybody still has criticism about that, that's just how I say it. That's how I grew up saying it. It's a colloquialism where I'm from. So please, suck it up and move on. Yes, it's Turismo, but colloquially here in some parts of the U.S., it's Turismo. Deal with it. And now, on to some car makers. The one car maker that I got wrong the worst was Lancia. Apparently, the English pronunciations of Lancia or Lancia are wrong and quote-unquote indefensible according to what was the website I was at learn to pronounce that word dot com yes that's really a website I went to I'll link it in the description but it's Lance Lancia I'm sorry it's Lancia two syllables not three Lancia and then of course you have Pagani that's easy Fiat Alfa Romeo all right so Citroen I think I'm saying this right, because I haven't gotten any problems with this. Um, but I feel like I'm saying this wrong. Am I saying Citroen wrong? Peugeot, I learned how to pronounce that one from World's Wildest Police videos. So that's Peugeot, Renault. So I used to say Renault. I mean, here in America, what we do is we pronounce things or say things as they're spelled. Another colloquialism I'll add in is the Pokemon Arceus. Some people say Arceus, some people say Arceus. 
Honestly, I don't know which one's which. I'll have to be sure, be able to, I'll have to look that one up. I don't know. Um, but back to Gran Turismo, or I'm just going to go by my colloquialism, Gran Turismo, Renault. Germany, these ones are pretty easy. Audi, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Opel, Ruff, Volkswagen. And no, it's not Ruf or R-U-F. It's Ruff. The U.S. is fairly straightforward. I don't even need to do those. Japan, Daihatsu. We all know those guys here. Tommy Kaira. I used to say it was Tommy Kiara. Until I saw the A came before the I. I never called it Tommy Kiara in the previous videos. But growing up, that's what I said. That's Tommy Kyra. Aston Martin. I used to say Ashton Martin. Because I had a neighbor whose last name was Ashton. Or, my god. Her first name was Ashton. I apologize. I just, I just woke up from a nap. So, yeah. Alright, Lister. That's pretty straightforward. Belgium. This is Gillet. Not Gillet or Gillet. It's Gillet. I know I didn't say it like that before, but this is Gillet. I just want to add that out there. And then Australia's Tickford. Okay, I think we got the pronunciations of all of the car companies done. So let's go see if there's any cars I screwed up. This is the Toyota Alteza LM race car. Growing up, I used to think it was Alteza, a long E instead of a short E, but I'd learned that that's not how you say it. It's Alteza, apparently. If I'm still wrong about that, please let me know and link me to it. Back to Lancia again. This is their Delta HF Integrale rally car. And I think that's how you pronounce that I word. After how I've read it on the uh, pronunciation websites, I do believe that I nailed that one finally. I think I said something along the lines of Integral in the past, but I can't be too sure. Here's one that I don't mess up, but it may be tricky to some of you all out there. This is the Esperante GTR1. I used to have so much trouble pronouncing this one, but... After watching a race years ago, I heard how to actually pronounce it. It's Esperante. So don't let that trip you up no more, guys. The Lotus Esprit, or Esprit. I, I believe it's Esprit. Who says Esprit, unless this is like some sort of French car, but no. This is the Lotus Esprit. This is, of course, the Impreza. But I heard a Need for Speed game once refer to it as the Impreza. I've always heard it called the Impreza. So I'm pretty sure that's still right. I know they don't have it named this anymore. It would evolve into the Subaru WRX in later years. Here's one I'll probably always struggle with. The Sprinter Trueno, Trueno GT Apex. Or Apex. It's Apex, not Apex. I'm sorry. Um... But, how do you pronounce that? Trueno? Trueno? I used to say Tureno, just to, so I didn't have to even bother pronouncing it. I just call it the Sprinter, to be honest. Or the AE86. But, even to this day, I still struggle pronouncing that part of the name. So, if anybody could please tell me below how to pronounce Trueno, let me know. Thank you. Here's another trip up, the Citroen Sara rally car, or the Sara, the Sara? The X is silent, I know that for fact, but how's it, Sara or Sara, with that said? Do you say it like the name, or do you say it like you see it? Here's one that I've always said a little differently, that's changed through the years, Cote d'Azur. It's actually, um... It's French for the Azor Coast, but as we can all see, this is clearly the Monaco GP circuit, raced on the city streets of Monaco. Growing up, I used to say Cote d'Azor. This is clearly the lightweight sports car cup, but in GT4 onwards, it would be renamed to the lightweight K car cup. That K-E-I, it looks like it's supposed to be pronounced key. Well, bear in mind, it will be K. 
like the letter K. The E acts as kind of like a A, like a super weak E. I just figured I'd throw that in there real quick, because that would be a pronunciation mistake, but it's not in this game. So just a little add-on there. I pointed this out before, but in case you didn't see the third video, this is Italian avant-garde, but at the bottom here, it's misspelled as Italian avant-grade. So, it's avant-garde. Alright, this is the polyphony, or polyphony, if you ask some people, digital cup. I've been told time and time again, apparently it's polyphony, but I always said polyphony. Basically like the uh, phonics of music, monophonic, biphonic, um, wait, or is it duophonic? I don't remember. But yeah, like monophonic and all that. If I'm wrong, let me know and I will change the pronunciation. But polyphony, polyphony, so far as I know, it's interchangeable. But if it's not, let me know politely in the comments. Alright, here's one I don't get wrong, but could be very easy to get wrong. The passage to Colosseo. It's Colosseo. That's what, that's what the Rome Colosseum is called. It's not Colosseo. It's Colosseo. So, just a little add-on there too, real quick. Here's one I still can't seem to feel like I get right. Mistral or Maestral? I feel like it's Mistral. I feel like Mistral would be right. But if I'm wrong, let me know. Moving on now, I had said something incorrect about the Formula 1 cars. Previously in the first video, I stated that the first number in the name was the stroke engine. For example, the F686M had a six-stroke engine, and the F090S had a zero-stroke engine. And then someone politely, not, pointed out that zero-stroke and six-stroke engines don't exist. So I had gotten that wrong. To tell the truth, I really don't know what the zero or six stands for. I was informed that, I was informed by somebody that, um, for example, it was the F687S had a V6 engine. So I'm wondering if that's what the, if that's what they mean by this. Well, let's see here. He's right. What about in here? A V10. Hmm, is there a connection? Alright, this zero has a V10. Oops, I screwed up. Let me go up here real quick. Oop, too far. Another six. Is this a V6? Yep, it's a V6. This one's probably a V6 too. Yep. And, let me guess, V10. Hey, okay, so now we see what that number means. So... If it's a zero, it's got a V10. If it's a six, it's got a V6. The second and third numbers are, of course, the year they raced. 90, so that's a 1990 formula car. And then the letter at the end stands for the driver. S is Ayrton Senna. M is Nigel Mansell. This is his 1986 V6. What was this? A Williams, I think they said? And here is Senna's 1987 V6 Lotus. Here is Damon Hill's 1994 V10 Williams. Alright, now I get it. Thank you to whoever that commenter was that, um, that brought up the whole V6 thing. You finally got me figuring out what that really means. Thank you. Okay, well, I've pretty much addressed everything I wanted to correct. So, real quick, I want to show... Within the last three years, we've had older models of cars come and older models of cars go. I'll show what I mean by that. For example, as we all know, the NXX was discontinued sometime in the mid-2000s. Well, recently, it's come back as a much more powerful, meaner machine. I'll continue going along here and giving some more examples. For example, Aston Martin's DB11 could easily smoke this thing. The DB7, it would be destroyed. However, whereas we got some great new returns of some cars, we also lost some Titans. In 2017, Dodge sadly announced that they would discontinue the Viper. RIP to the Viper.
In addition, we still have yet to get the Viper GTSR concept, and it will never appear, sadly. Though I wish they would have released this thing. It is a beauty. Chevrolet has also announced a major change to its legendary Corvette sports car. No longer will it have a front engine rear wheel drive layout, but now the engine will go midship. Effective with generation 8. Therefore, front ship engine Corvettes will become a thing of the past. RIP to the front ship engine Corvette. Ford released a second generation of the GT, which was a modern interpretation of the legendary GT40. While the Mazda MX-5 Miata continues to be made and has basically been continuously made since the late 80s, early 90s, the new models look absolutely badass. Mitsubishi has officially discontinued the Lancer Evolution line of cars. In 2017, Porsche's exclusivity license with EA expired. EA went to get it renewed, and Porsche essentially said, No, we don't want to renew it. What have we gotten out of it? One game in 2000, and other than that, we've been limited to need for speed. We're done. And they discontinued the exclusivity license with EA. Sure, EA can still use Porsche, but now so can Microsoft for the Forza Motorsports games, and so can Polyphony Digital for Gran Turismo. In fact, I had previously stated in the first video that a hidden Porsche can be found in the game's coding. This right here is the Porsche 911 GT3 996 model. It was to be the only Porsche in the game. It was not released on any version of the game. This is because Electronic Arts, or EA, had bought the rights to Porsche for their Need for Speed series, so Gran Turismo could not add this to the game. Following an update, the 911 GT3 was added to Gran Turismo Sport. Following the influx of bringing back old names into the public with new cars, such as with the Supra and the NSX, rumors are swirling that Toyota is gearing up to bring back the MR2. And yes, as I had just mentioned, Toyota did in fact bring back the Supra in 2019, and it looks badass. Well, you happy now? I fixed it. I fixed all my errors, and hell, I even had a little bit of stuff to that. So maybe you can call this a fourth video if you want to. I don't want to. I just want to say I corrected some errors I made. But anyway, thank y'all for watching, and if you liked what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. I do Gran Turismo videos here and there. I do other stuff. I'm planning skits. I do a lot of stuff on this channel, and I try to get other people involved. But I've just been so busy, and with going back to school now, coming up this August, I'm going to be even more busy. But I'll continue to try, the keywords try, to get videos out. I'll probably be sure to regularly do my online, uh... Gran Turismo 3 Let's Play. It's called the Gran Turismo 3 Nostalgia Challenge. And it's called the Nostalgia Challenge for a reason. I only play using the cars from the first and second games. So I can't use the 787B in the works. So, if you're into these kind of videos, subscribe and check them out. Now, some of them are kind of crappy. Some of the episodes suck. and They've gotten better with time. But, for other stuff like comedy... I think you'll really like this channel, but um, not to toot my own horn, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to say uh, thank y'all, 175 subs right now. Not bad after three years of existence, I guess, <laughs> but be sure to continue to watch, and I will see you guys around. Thanks.